Are we good? Yeah. Hi. All right. Everybody, thanks for joining us today. I'm David Keeley with Cornerstones of Science. Um, we are one of about four or five organizations that are involved with NASA at my library. It is a, uh, a five-year project. We're uh, in year three. Um, other organizations that are involved, the lead organization is the Space Science Institute out in Colorado with the National Center for Interactive Learning. Um, EDC is the project evaluator, and uh, NASA naturally is really interested to know whether we're having the intended impact um, that we hope to be having through NASA at my library. Um, we have the Pacific Science Center is also a partner in this. Um, COSLA, um, the, the chief officers of the state library agencies is also very involved. Um, and you can see here on this slide that we have um, um, a number of state library agencies um, that are involved, all these acronyms across the bottom. There are 18 of them. Um, and we also have um, 75 public libraries in 49 states. So we, uh, we're, we're well into the project. We're delighted that you could join us today. Um, Vivian and Heather are going to really help us understand how it is you can bring space science experts into your public libraries. Um, and with that, I turn it back to Vivian. All right. Um, would you like me to go ahead and start talking about the NASA Night Sky Network? Sure. Is that all right? I think that's our next slide here. Let's see how that works. No, that would have been too easy. Two shakes. All right. So welcome, everybody. I am so excited to partner with the libraries across the country. My name is Vivian. I met many of you a minute ago. I am with the NASA Night Sky Network at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific here in San Francisco. And the NASA Night Sky Network has been around about 15 years. And we are a group of about 440 amateur astronomy clubs across the country. And amateur has have any of you ever worked with amateur astronomy clubs? You can say so in the chat if so. Um, they are some of the most dedicated, enthusiastic space science um, nerds, <laughs> nuts, um, enthusiasts. <laughs> I, I use nerds um, in a kind way, being one myself. And, um, and we are uh, thrilled to share the night sky, the day sky, um, and space science, specifically NASA space science, with uh, the general public. So I've got on the slide here a few different uh, resources that you can use to reach out to amateur astronomers in your area. Um, a couple of things. On the bottom right, you'll see the network of um, uh, all the different clubs. If you go to the home page, let me see if I can advance here. Two shakes. Oops. Let's see if that works. There you go. If you go to the home page, you can see on the right hand side, you can put in your zip code and your current location and find the closest amateur astronomy club to you. There are, um, they are all over the country, as you saw on the map. And um, at, you can find upcoming events that they're having and also just um, clubs that are near you who would might be available to come and be a resource for your library. So just going back. A couple of things that you can do. You can certainly, from the club webpage, many of them will allow you to request an event directly. Um, it's great to go and check out one of their local events to see what kind of things are going on, to see what they're already offering. It's a nice way to give your uh, patrons something to do after you uh, have some kind of space event. Say, hey, if you're really interested and you want to learn more, go check out your local amateur astronomy club. They have telescopes and usually speaker sessions. So um, you can learn a lot about astronomy with a lot of other enthusiastic people that way. The Night Sky Network though is more than just a uh, depot for amateur astronomers. We also have a lot of outreach resources. So from that front page, you can find many dozens and dozens of uh, informal astronomy activities. A lot of those are great for use in libraries. So uh, if you search for libraries, you'll find quite a few um, different uh, activities designed specifically for use in libraries, including connecting them with books and uh, how to partner well with, uh, with your amateur astronomy club if you're a library, some things to consider. 
uh, there's also a night sky planner. So if you're looking for this year for things you'd like to do space related, you can look up things that are happening this month. You can look up things that are happening this year. You can see uh, what the sky will be like in your area when there's going to be the next full moon, for example, things like that. Um, the night sky planner gives you all sorts of great resources for finding out what's up in the night sky. Uh, there's also, on the 15th of every month, we publish a one-page uh, article called Night Sky Notes that uh, is just telling about what, is, what are some great things to see in the night sky in the next month and how NASA science is related to those things. So, um, here we go. Um, so you're welcome to the little bit.ly right below that, bit.ly slash night sky notes is the way to get there. You can see the most recent one that just went up last week. And um, oh, oh, one other thing on here, I was gonna show you in the middle here are lots of uh, handouts. You can find handouts if, there is, if there's a moon ob observing night or if there's a meteor shower coming up, you can find handouts that are very easy just to pass out to your audience that allow them to know more information about what's going on in the night sky. So there are a lot of different resources. I would say that the amateur astronomers are some of the best. They love to bring their telescopes out. They're often um, keen to be, have an ask an astronomer evening or set up a small presentation or do some outreach activities. The Night Sky Network provides the amateur clubs with uh, activities and demonstrations that they can do with the general public. And so that's an uh, easy way for them to connect and do some activities that have been tested all over the country and are, are easy for the public to understand. So that is probably, I think, all I have for the amateurs. Heather and I have put together a document that we'll be sending out afterwards that have tips for partnering with amateur astronomers and solar system ambassadors. So with that, I think I'll stop sharing and see, um, Heather, if you want to go after me, I'm going to um, take a look at the chat, which I couldn't see while I was on here. But I love that so many amateur astronomy clubs are working with libraries already. That's great. One thing I didn't mention is that there are also many um, uh, library telescope programs. And there's information on that. If you look up library telescope program, you can find plenty of information where you can have a library and um, a telescope to check out in your library. I definitely um, recommend that if at all possible. So I'll stop there and hand it over to Heather. Are you on? Yes. Can you hear me? Great. Yeah, great. And Wonderful. do you want to share your screen? I will do. Great. Thanks for that, Vivian. That's awesome as always. Let's see. I guess I'm going to share desktop one. Huh? Let's see. All right. Can you see my screen? Looking good. All right. Um, so I work with the Solar System Ambassador Program, which is very similar to the Night Sky Network. And my name is Heather Doyle. Um, I also have another person, Kay Ferrari, who's been working on the program for about 20 years now since its inception. So she's also a big part of the Solar System Ambassador Program. Um, but we have about a thousand volunteers nationwide, and they are individuals who are basically NASA in your neighborhood. So they get uh, science briefings directly from NASA scientists and engineers on a monthly basis, um, usually two to three a month, um, with the latest in NASA science, as well as we do, um, obviously, like with the Apollo 50th, they're, they're getting briefings about that and looking back as well as looking forward. So these folks were hand chosen. They went through a very rigorous application process to become a solar system ambassador. Uh, we call their references and everything. Um, and then they're continuously trained on NASA science. Uh, and then they're tasked to run four events a year. So that's part of what their requirements are for volunteering. So an event um, could be with a library, obviously, and, and they already do partner with a lot of libraries, but also with schools, with troops, with clubs. Um, so there's about, I think in the last 20 years, I just looked this up, there have been over 43,000 events by ambassadors reaching over 8.2 million people directly. So they're well-versed, well-trained, and ready to help you with all of your events. So I wanted to kind of um, share with you a couple of things, a couple of ways to get um, to find your local ambassador and then some of the resources that they have once you find them. So we have um, our website, which actually I'll, I'll warn you, we're going to get an upgrade this year. But if you go to 
solarsystem.nasa.gov slash SSA. It will take you to our Solar System Ambassador website where you can watch this video of an ambassador so you can kind of get a gist of, of what they do. And then if you want to find an ambassador near you or if you want to find an event near you, which you probably wouldn't, but you, it's just another resource the general public can use to find events that ambassadors are running. And if you have an event at the library, you could advertise it there. But mostly you'll be clicking on the directory And here is a list of ambassadors um, by state, so you can look up ambassadors by state, or if you happen to know an ambassador's name, you can look it up by name. So it's taking a little while to load. But there you, you can see all the pins just in California alone. We have a lot of ambassadors. And when you find one that's near you and you want to click on the pin, you'll see a, their picture. And then when you when you click on their picture, you see a little bio. So you can learn about um, where did they go to school, what was their degree in, and you can look at some of the previous events that they've either hosted or been a part of. Um, so you can get a good gist of what this person is like. I can see their address and phone number. You won't be able to see that, <laughs> but I'm logged in, in as an admin. So um, you'll be able to contact them through a form that you'll see there that says email this ambassador. So you'll click on that and you'll be able to send an email and then you can correspond directly and exchange, um, you know, phone numbers and stuff like that if you want to, but we don't, we just don't put their information out there um, for everybody to find, of course. Um, so once you contact that ambassador, um, as Vivian mentioned, there are some tips that we put together for you so that you can have a really successful event. So things that you need to coordinate with the ambassador, like telling them what type of audience you have, you know, is it kids, is it adults, is there a specific theme that you'd like, or would you like them to kind of come up with their own theme? So they, they're very flexible. And one of the other resources that they do have is we created a flyer for them. So this image over here, or this PDF is actually, the front is just a general explanation of what the Solar System Ambassador Program is. But then the back is the what, who, what, when, where, what, why type of um, where the event is happening. So they have resources like this to be able to easily advertise the event. So besides advertising on our website, they can give you a ready-made flyer. Um, and typically you can't use the NASA logo, so I got special permission on this one. So that's, that's kind of fun. But that just means no other logos can go on it, unfortunately. So with the ambassadors, you can do just a one-off event or you can plan a series. Um, there, you just have to work out with them exactly what they can do as far as um, time commitment. But they are always really excited when you reach out to them because as I mentioned, they have four events to do a year. So when you reach out to them, it helps them accomplish those it gives them one less thing to worry about. And they love talking all things NASA, so they're happy to um, come into the library and um, help you with whatever you need. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, I don't think it's on this here, but if you have any other questions or if you have any um, issues with reaching an ambassador, sometimes we need to update their email address in the system, you can always um, email me at ambassad, A-M-B-A-S-S-A-D, so it's like ambassador without the O-R, at jpl.nasa.gov. And that, I think that website is actually on this page here. So you can contact us and we'll help you find someone local as well. But I think that's all I had to share on ambassadors. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, okay, I think next we have Sarah Post, also from Cornerstones of Science. And Sarah, can you, let's see if we can hear you. Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, Excellent. absolutely. Um, so I don't have any slides, but I'm gonna um, just really a quick hello from the NASA at My Library project team and Cornerstones of Science. I'm here in Brunswick, Maine. So not, not so sunny today, but very, very chilly. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to let you know that if you are in one of the 18 states that are part of the NASA at My Library project, um, they have two uh, STEM facilitation kits that are available to public libraries. Uh, they'll be circulating, so you'll just need to request those from your state library agency. Um, I can just show you here, this is a STEM facilitation guide for the first one. This is the Sun Earth Moon Connections. And the second kit is um, Be a NASA Detective, Expanding Your Senses. So a lot of fun um, activities and science tools 
um, specifically for librarians, or you can bring in um, and work with a, a astronomical club member to come help you do activities or solar system ambassador that can help as well. So I um, just want to let you guys know that those resources are available and you want to track those down with your <laughs> state library agency or um, a lot of great activities through the STEM activity clearing house. Um, that's an online resource with lots of um, activities as well. And um, I'm going to put in the chat um, two links to the introductory videos of those two state kits uh, for you guys to kind of watch a little bit about what's, what's exactly in those kits. So I hope that you will um, track those down with your state library agencies. And if, if you're not one of the 18, then um, again, there's so many resources out there. You're going to have fun um, finding them on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse or working with uh, the Night Sky Network and the Solar System Ambassadors. So, and also one more thing, Cornerstones of Science, um, we do a library telescope program, so you can maybe check us out um, online as well for your library telescope. Thank you. Oh, excellent. That was me that wasn't muted. I was trying to mute everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much, Sarah. And I think we have one more presenter, Kathy Lancaster. Kathy, can you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Kathy Lancaster with the Library of Michigan. I'm Youth Services Coordinator here for our statewide library services uh, department. And we are one of the original four in the cohort of NASA at my library for state libraries. Um, and I believe now, David, correct me if I'm wrong, that we are at um, 15 state library agencies. 18 all together. 18. <laughs> um, so chances are your state library um, might be participating and you probably heard about this webinar today through your state library um, but be sure to go to their website and take a look um, at your state library's site for more information on NASA at my library including links to all these resources talked about today um, we link to the clearinghouse from StarNet libraries we link to Sarah's uh, videos and of course we link to night sky network and solar system ambassadors and so make sure you contact your local state library for information on that a lot of state libraries are offering training throughout um, their state on STEM and space science. So check in with them to see when the training might be coming to their area. In Michigan, um, we did those back in September and we trained nearly 200 librarians. Um, so it's really fun, really exciting program. And we're just grateful that NASA and Space Science Institute and everybody involved here um, was looking to partner with libraries. So thanks so much. This is great. Thank you everybody for joining us. Okay, I'm going to hop out of here. So maybe you can see everybody else's picture. Um, thank you, thank you so much. I am really excited to be partnering with all of you and I hope that you have lots of good questions. I see a few coming in. If you have any more questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A section um, there. And let's see. Um, Brittany says, can we distribute the planner and monthly notes to the public? Absolutely, please do. We would love that. You're welcome. All of the NASA materials are free to the public. Well, you have paid for them already with your tax dollars, and we thank you very, very much. <laughs> um, Margaret talked about, can we locate a bilingual English-Spanish ambassador via the website? And Heather, did you want to take that? Sure, we do have um, some bilingual ambassadors, and if you look at their bio, you can usually tell. It doesn't explicitly state it, and that is actually a really good point for our new website, that we should have maybe a legend that says what languages they speak, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, but you can usually tell from their bio, and, um, but if you want specific help with that, you can certainly email me at the address that I mentioned before, ambassad at jpl.nasa.gov, and we can hook you up with someone we know that specifically has those skills. Um, I wanted to mention too that um, Solar System Ambassadors and Night Sky Network Club members, they are not doing this for the money. Um, this is actually something they do for the love of space. And so that these are volunteers that you can ask to come to your libraries. Um, and, but as such, they are volunteers. So there's not, if, 
there may be times that they can and can't make it. So it's best to plan a little bit as early, as early as possible. I would give them at least a month notice, which is probably pretty good for libraries who do planning pretty far ahead as well. Sometimes with schools, they say, hey, can you come on Tuesday? <laughs> um, and that's, that's a little hard sometimes for them to do because they are volunteers with day jobs and who just love to share the night sky and um, astronomy. So um, also as such, if there's any kind of thank you, like a card that you um, could get from the participants to sign that said, hey, thanks for sharing your time and, and your knowledge. We really appreciate that. I've seen some libraries who um, check out an astronomer. I don't think that's actually the right term for it, but they have an astronomer um, who comes kind of like they have a tax preparer who comes. There's a name for that. Um, trying to remember, like check out an expert uh, when uh, full of good information. Also, this is the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 lunar landing. Uh, many of the amateur astronomers um, began their obsession with space right around that time. So many of them were young people at that time. And now they have really amazing memories of what propelled them into space exploration. Um, so they might be really great people to have if you're having any sort of commemorative um, uh, talks about that. They are really fabulous. Um, to share their knowledge around the 50th anniversary of the space exploration, human space exploration. Let's see, we have a couple more questions here. Lori says, does the clearinghouse help libraries get telescopes in libraries? Are libraries interested, but funding is tight? Um, Lori, the clearinghouse, uh, well, uh, Sarah, did you want to talk about that? I think the clearinghouse, okay. yeah. The clearing, yeah, the STEM activity clearinghouse is mainly a place to go find activities, um, see how to how to do some of the activities. They provide how-to videos, um, you know. So it's not necessarily a place to go find library telescopes. There's there's actually a number of library telescope programs throughout the U.S. Um, and and some of them are you know lo local uh, astronomy clubs who <laughs> are either donating or do mainly selling at cost you know a modified telescope so you can have a, a telescope in your library that either stays in your library for programming or you could even circulate them out to patrons like you do a book. So um, there's there's quite a few uh, programs um, if you need some help. Um, finding one that's maybe local or uh, again Cornerstones works nationally um, so you can you can contact me if you want to find out more information about that um, but there's a great a number of great clubs for instance Aldridge Astronomical Society in Massachusetts has a huge program uh, the St. Louis Astronomical Society I could I could kind of go on and on <laughs> but there are some really amazing ones that um, are uh, localized the New Hampshire Astronomical Society so um, yeah, give it, you can contact me or, um, again, contact your local club to see if they have anything going on like that. And let me jump in here on the question of funding. Um, so your state library might be doing uh, grants through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So check with your LSTA grants coordinator at your state library. And um, I will mention that the fund scope that goes in the BIA uh, detective via NASA detective uh, I believe that was what Sarah was that that's around $90 I believe it's not yeah, that expensive. It's, it's, it's pretty inexpensive and we, we like that one it's a, it's a small telescope but um, it's a good starter one to just kind of you know, not, not, it's, it's not huge, so right. <laughs> kind of feel okay, especially if you're new at it. Um, and then a, a typical library telescope that a lot of the libraries are using is a, a what we call a 4.5 inch. And it's also not, not all that big, but just a little bit bigger. And um, you, it's a mighty one. I tell you, you can have a lot of success. And I think that's the key to, um, to using a telescope or binoculars um, is that you're, you're successful with it in a short amount of time. And, and again, a lot of these uh, astronomical clubs are using the, that specific 4.5 inch telescope um, as the library telescope um, go to because it is so, so powerful and small. And that one typically ranges, I think, anywhere from 200 to, to 350, depending on if you're going to get a fully modified and, you know, books that go with it and everything. So yeah, that's, 
so a lot of um, public libraries here in Michigan um, have access to LST, LSTA grant funding uh, right now. The applications are coming in um, and that will be for summer reading funding. And this NASA at My Library program has been great because they gave us access to the notebooks that come in the kits. Um, and a, quite a number of public libraries in Michigan have told me they're looking at funding um, their own kits that they will keep in their library to do outreach with, um, thanks to the LSTA dollars. Um, so, you know, definitely take um, a look at what your state library has to offer to support you in this. And I will say too that many amateur astronomy clubs help libraries get set up with that and they become kind of the um, uh, the person in charge of the telescope. I know I have two telescopes in Berkeley that are my telescopes <laughs> that I work with um, that I keep up to date and I uh, make sure they're aligned and things like that. So, you know, do some kind of quarterly maintenance on them. Um, I put a link in the chat that's for librarytelescope.org. There was a question about, is there a preferred telescope to use? Um, it, that's not something that we can really comment on. It's not, um, there are clubs that use different kinds of telescopes, but that place that I sent you, librarytelescopes.org, they do have some recommendations there. And, and there are some modifications you'll wanna make to make it as unbreakable as possible. So I recommend uh, partnering with your local astronomy club on that because they are experts in this and can help you with the eyepieces you might want or um, locking everything down so that nothing gets fiddly to be broken with. Yeah, um, there were a lot of other questions. Let's there are a couple here for Heather. Great. Um, Heather, does the ambassador's site list the requirements to come to become a volunteer ambassador? Oh, you're unmuted. There we go. I think I'm unmuted now. Um, it does list the requirements every September. That's when the application process opens. Besides that, we have the application process hidden through the, re the rest of the year. Um, so if you're interested in becoming an ambassador, um, you can still email me and I'll add you to the interested list that we'll send out an email uh, probably late, well, usually early September, um, once we, the application is open. Um, then we have a whole list of people that we email that to who's emailed us throughout the year and said, hey, how do I become an ambassador? So if you wanna be on that list, just um, send me an email. And this other question from Rebecca is probably apropos both for Vivian mm -hmm. and Heather. Mm -hmm. about knocking on the door. Um, is this the travel question from Rebecca? Um, I contacted mm -hmm. she went travel, yep. Yes, yeah, so although there are many ambassadors and clubs, if they're not really close to you, um, that can be an issue. We, we do say that an ambassador can ask if it's more than 50 miles from them, they can ask for um, help with gas or um, accommodations in that regards. Um, so you could offer that if um, you're having a hard time with one person. But yes, most of the time in the directory, I see like, you know, seven emails because I, I get every email that goes through the directory mm -hmm. so I can monitor for spam. So a lot of times I'll see like five to seven go through at once because someone's obviously reaching out to a bunch of folks in their local area hoping that one will say yes. So that would be the best strategy, I think, is reach out to a bunch of people, see it like, you know, fishing and see which one you can get. Um, and again, if you have issues with contacting people, you can also reach out to Kay or myself and we can, we can help you with that too. Yeah, um, uh, Montana, unfortunately, is just one of the least pop, or I guess um, least dense people states. So there are not as many clubs or ambassadors in Montana as say New Jersey. Um, but uh, we definitely would love to help you coordinate with them. If there's any way to, you can send us an email to our emails are on that. Um, we'll send out a list of links and emails so that you have all of that at the end, um, along with our best practices for working with um, NASA subject matter experts like the Solar System Ambassadors and the Night Sky Network. All right, is that about it? I think we're oh. good, Vivian, Heather. Um, Kathy, Sarah, thanks for uh, for supporting us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you, everyone. Make sure you contact your local state library for more information too. <laughs> Sounds good.
Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.